center is a little different than other ones. We believe in outside and connecting children to nature. So um, we have these tables set up out here. They always have activities on them. And so this is like an extension of the indoor classroom. So small groups would come out here or work in the garden. They work in the garden every day. And then I think we're really different in that everything on the other side of the little short wooden fence is a certified wildlife habitat. Oh. It looks um, different kinds of plants and uh, we have beautiful wildflowers in the spring. Butterflies always. <laughs> and we have a mud kitchen because we have sand and we have water. Got it, got it. This is where they make the mud pies. Child, so uh -huh. how to have that dramatic play. So if it's the right kind of day, you could just do everything outside. You could stay outside. So we do at least two hours a day, an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon, plus any of the extra time they send, spend in the garden. So so the, the center here at CDA Hilltop is really uh, expansive. Like I'm standing outside this small building and there's a bunch of green space for the kids to play, a bunch of mulch, and there are probably 50 kids here running around, they're tricycling around a track, they're throwing balls, some kids are on one side painting. Uh, it's a idyllic little scene. So are there some, are all the kids outside right now? No, some are inside. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just get like one more minute. It's all okay. so cute. I visited a preschool that serves mostly low-income families in Chula Vista, a city just a few miles north of the U.S.-Mexico border in San Diego County. Many parents would do whatever they could to get their child into this program, but every year the waiting list is really long. Inside a classroom with children or inside a classroom that doesn't have children? Let's see some children in action. Okay. <laughs> it's a sycamore classroom then. Hi, we have a visitor. Can we say hello? hello? Hi. We are working today. It looks like we're working on beads and some play doh and some building and reading a story. You made your own bracelet today. Oh, beautiful. Let me see. What's your bracelet there? What's on it? It's, a, it's magic. Oh, it's magic. Okay. This is my microphone. Don't have. Well, you can hold hold it for just one second, very gently, gently. Hello. <laughs> Try guys. I hold it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is Good Schools for All. A show from Voice of San Diego about how schools work and how they don't. I'm Will Huntsbury. California's governor has talked about making a massive investment in early childhood care in the near future. This week, I'm at a preschool to find out what's happening on the ground now and what would be needed to bring California closer to some version of universal pre-K. After the preschool tour, I talked to the director, Susan Holly. I, what do you think the difference is for some a, a child who gets in a program like this at three years old and, uh, and a child who does not? You know, most of the research shows that a child who's gone to one year of preschool, when they enter kindergarten, they're way more successful than children who don't go at all. They learn to take direction from someone other than their parent. They learn all kinds of things that are those skills that are wonderful for going into kindergarten. You know, um, they're exposed to reading and shapes and colors, and but it's all done in such a nice, natural learning setting. The, I think it's just the opportunity, and the sooner you can start, the better. I mean, when children go to kindergarten, they have to know so much more than they ever did way back when. So um, I think everything that we do prepares them for that. Oh. Yeah, and we have a lot of the kindergarten uh, parents that uh, kids go to kindergarten, and the parents come back and say they're doing really well. They got, you know, they read right away. They got an award for this or that or the other. But so we, we get, I like that feedback from parents, so that, that I know what we do 
is correct. So are you, uh, what are, what, how are you feeling about the direction the state wants to go with, with pre, pre-kindergarten for, for kids? I know other states have free preschool and I would love to see that because, you know, we offer this to low-income families, but there's those families in the middle that can't afford high-quality preschool settings. This is an eight-to-one ratio. If you're paying um, in any other center at this age group, it would be 12 to one. So you can see right away the difference. Um, So I think if it was a statewide thing where all children, all four-year-olds got to attend a year of preschool before going to kindergarten, it would be immensely uh, beneficial to everyone. But you know, I assume you guys are with a program this amazing for for low-income families, you're at capacity, presumably. I mean, there's probably a lot lot of low-income families who... Always a big waiting list, always a big waiting list. And we do take a few, we save a few slots for what we call private pay parents that wanna pay their own tuition. But it's a very small percentage of, of what we do here. So, I mean, I feel really good that we offer something this beautiful, this high quality to low-income families. How much, just from your, you know, uh, interactions in the community, how much do you think we would need to expand the availability to, to net all the people who need it? I, I have no idea what the numbers are, how many, uh, yeah, no, yeah they, they know like how many spaces are, have, that they need and they don't have. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll go uh, figure out the answer need. to that question yes. now. Yes. Gonna... you can go in. After spending some time at the preschool, I drove over to the headquarters of a place called Child Development Associates. They run several preschool programs throughout Southwest San Diego, like the one I'm leaving now. They also run a program that provides vouchers to low-income families to help them afford childcare or preschool. I talked to Rick Richardson and Jolie Buberall, the CEO and Operations Manager for Child Development Associates. They talked to me about the organization's capacity about how many families they're serving now and how many families in the community still need to be served. Um, so, so I guess first tell me what, uh, what does CDA do? How long has it been in the community? Well, CDA is a community-based nonprofit agency. We've been around since 1974. This is our 45th anniversary and the CDA's uh, vision is to create positive change in our community. Uh, We do that primarily through helping uh, families afford childcare and and have access to quality childcare and also increasing child nutrition throughout Southern California. Um, Imagine a single mother with two children here in San Diego County, a very high cost place to live. Um, subsidized child care provides the opportunity for that single mother to go to work because with two children in San Diego, that's a significant cost barrier. And without uh, assistance for low income families, their only alternative is to go into the welfare system. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and so let's talk about that working mother. Um, what would she need to do to qualify? Obviously, this would be a big deal for her. Like she needs this child care so she can work. What, what does she have to do? The mother has to have a um, financial eligibility, being low income, and a working need or a need to go to school. Got it. So, so there's an income threshold, and then there, there's also they. This is so they can go to school or so they can go to work. Exactly. And one way to think of it is a dual generational program. That means it's providing the parent the opportunity to go to work or go to school, and the opportunity for a child to receive early childhood education and safe childcare. Um, but the challenge we have is. Uh, even though many parents qualify for the subsidized childcare assistance, there are not enough spaces in preschools and the alternative payment program to meet the the need in our county. And specifically, uh, we have a waiting list for our preschools and we have a waiting list um, in the county for for the the voucher program. Um, The voucher program has a a list of over 5,000 children 
waiting for child care. California is proposing small expansions to early childhood education funding. So I asked Rick, if that money actually makes it through, would it make any real difference on that list of children waiting to get into care? We have been um, telling that story. We have been talking to our elected officials and California Department of Education officials um, about the unmet need in San Diego County. Um, and we've been telling them that uh, we're ready to serve more families. We're ready to get more parents working and more children in child care. We just need additional funding. Uh, we were very happy to receive um, enough funding to add over 600 children to our program last year. And this year in Governor Newsom's budget uh, that he signed in, ju in June, um, he signed an additional money and we expect to get um, um, funding for about 600 children um, this year to expand the program. Um, unfortunately, that will not be enough to meet all of the need, but will certainly, um, certainly be a forward progress in serving more, Cal more uh, San Diego families. Right, so will uh, the way things look now, you guys would get money to serve 600, 700 more kids. That could reduce the waiting list to 4,300 or so or whatever. Um, and this is for the alternate pay program, and that money can be used for a, a licensed preschool pre, pre facility or a not licensed. It can also be used for, for a family member to take care of the kid. Am I getting that right? Absolutely. One of the great benefits of the alternative payment program is it's a parental choice program like Jolie mentioned. What that really means is the parent can choose the child care that meets their needs. Um, think of non-traditional jobs, um, evenings, weekends, um, preschool program centers, they typically aren't, aren't open then. So if a family, a parent can choose a family child care program or a family friend and neighbor to provide that, that child care. Um, also, if the parent has uh, um, cultural needs, the child has cultural needs um, or location needs, the parent has the freedom to choose any setting and any location that meets their needs. You guys also run preschools, um, the, three, the three preschools you guys run, and that um, is, as you've mentioned, really important for a child's brain development and helps them... Uh, be ready for that first day of kindergarten. You know, I think we know from the research that, that a lot of children show up really way behind already and they never catch up in the system. So um, where where's the county at in terms of providing preschool to children? So, you know, not talking about child, child care and preschool and lumping them together, but just talking about preschool, like where are we at? Well, the, the county is really a system of systems. You have the federal programs, think of federal Head Start and early Head Start that are 100% funded with federal dollars. And then you have the state preschool system like CDA's preschools, along with state preschools that are run by the, uh, the school districts. Um, and then on top of that, you have family child care home networks. So it sounds complicated. Um, but in a way, it's no different from um, K through 12 or the university system. You have public, you have private, you have charter schools. It's very similar because uh, the, needs, the needs vary uh, and the needs are different. Uh, one of the, the most critical shortages in San Diego County is child care for working parents. Um, there is very few um, programs that are, that are available for working parents. One of the unique features of CDA's preschools is their full day year round. So that enables parents to, uh, to get, get child care for eight, nine, 10 hours a day um, for their children while they're, while they're working. Um, right now there's a severe shortage of child care for working parents and we are working to increase that, uh, um, the number of, of those programs. The infrastructure almost we could call it, right? So it's a combination of infrastructure and it's a combination of ongoing funding. Uh, there is a, a shortage of new preschools being built. It's very expensive to, uh, to build a preschool. Uh, just, just looking at that facility I was just at, I was just really thinking like there must be so many programs that can't afford to have this nice a facility because they're operating on margins that won't allow it, you know? 
Exactly. We couldn't build that preschool today um, that, we, that we built that you saw earlier. Uh, we just don't have the startup costs to do that. And it's not economically feasible for us to take out another loan while we're still paying on the, the loan of the preschool that you saw. What would we need to move the needle? We need to make early education a priority in our state budget. Um, if you look at uh, the importance of early childhood education, it's just as important and some would say even more important than K through 12. Um, now we don't wanna pit uh, one, one uh, part of the education system against another. Um, I think proportionally, if you look at how much early education funding there is for new facilities, it's uh, completely behind the K through 12 system. What would it take for us to, what would it take to have, you know, let's just say universal preschool for four-year-olds? A lot of money. That's Jolie Buberall. I mean, I think that's been um, an idea for many years, and I know other states do it, but I think when it's been raised in California, just the, the expense of it has, uh, has made it not, um, not viable. Yeah, and I think the, to add to that, uh, the idea of universal preschool is, uh, is a challenge for working parents with, uh, with four-year-olds, for example. Um, if the universal preschool is only a three-and-a-half-hour part-day program, um, how are working parents going to get a four-year-old in, in a, a safe child care before and after if they're at work? Uh, most parents aren't going to be able to take their child in the morning and then pick their child up three and a half hours later. Uh, most parents have full-time jobs, so it's a challenge. And what time did you say your programs are open from until? Our programs are open from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m., um, designed for working parents. Uh, if you come to one of our preschools uh, in the morning, you'll see uh, several parents sitting in cars waiting for the doors to open at 7, uh, dropping off their uh, their sleepy three- and four-year-olds uh, for a full day at preschool while mom and dad, uh, or, or just maybe mom, goes off to work all day and then they may be picking their child up at night. I guess even if the state wanted to do it, it sounds like there's not the infrastructure there in terms of the buildings and preschool teachers, right? Correct. There's not. And, um, and it's, it's preschool's different than school. Th that, um, that infrastructure and the, and the training and if magically there was all this funding and um, preschool for all happened, I don't know that you have the workforce to, to do that. Um, that. Right, that was one, one of the recent studies, right? If, if we wanted to create a truly high quality program, that would also mean paying people more who are teaching the kids, right? Yes, yes, they should be compensated the same as um, elementary school teachers. Yeah, and I, I wanna just highlight, I mean, the idea of universal preschool is a great idea. It, it is where the state of California should go. All the research supports it. Um, but there are significant um, barriers. Um, the cost of doing so would be significant, and it's going to take time to get there. Um, but that's something that our great state could do with, uh, with the right investment and the right policy decisions in Sacramento. Uh, we could build the infrastructure. We could train the teachers. We could create that high-quality um, additional year of early education which I think we would see dividends in child achievement in the K through 12 system. So I'm talking to this guy, Rick Richardson, and as we're talking about schools and investment, and he's telling you about the history of early childhood education, I found out that this is actually more than a job for him. It's personal in a few ways. He said he grew up struggling financially, and his mom was a single parent. My mother was a single mother uh, with, with four children trying to make ends meet. And uh, I've seen how these programs have, have made a difference for families. It's a good investment. It's helping lots of families. We just need to serve the rest of the unmet need. And what, did you grow up in San Diego? I did. I grew up in San Diego. And, and went to a preschool program? I did. I went to a, a Head Start preschool program, and uh, my mother was a preschool teacher. His mom was a preschool teacher, and he was in a program like the ones he's running now. 
like the one we were just at in the beginning of the story. Hola. Um, so since you talked about your personal life, now I'm going to ask you more. Um, what, what, um, can you talk about how meaningful a program like Head Start was for your family with your mom being a single mom and a working mom? Well, if, I'll answer like this. If you were to go in, into my office, you'll see on my wall there are pictures of three doors. And those are symbolic of what my mother taught me. And she said that education, especially early childhood education, was the key to opportunity. I grew up in an environment where she didn't have a lot of money, but she kept telling me how important education was to finding a way of, for me to get out of poverty. Um, so I think, uh, I think that's what I took away from her. Um, education is... Uh, is uh, the great equalizer. It brings equity and it, uh, it opens those doors of opportunity. So the three doors are doors of opportunity. Exactly, exactly. And, and my mother used to, used to always say, um, I just want to create positive change. And the way she wanted to do that was supporting high quality early education and helping low income families uh, find opportunity. So she sounds like she was ahead of her time on like beating the early education drum. Um, she was uh, she was very passionate about the importance of early education. She uh, she worked tirelessly, um, uh, and uh, the rest of the story is it was my mother who founded CDA in 1974. That's her picture right there. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, I got it now. Now now this circle's coming full story. <laughs> California's governor, Gavin Newsom, has said he wants universal preschool, and soon. But so far, the state has only taken baby steps towards that vision. What I learned from Rick and Joe Lee is that we've got a long way to go before California creates anything like universal pre-K. This has been Good Schools for All from Voice of San Diego. I'm Will Huntsbury. To keep up with the entire season, be sure to subscribe. We're dropping a new episode every two weeks this semester. I have a newsletter you can follow too that's called The Learning Curve. Find it at vosd.org slash learning curve. My co-host for the show is our editor-in-chief, Scott Lewis. The rest of the crew includes Nate John, Adriana Heldiz, and Megan Wood. Thanks for listening. Talk to you in a couple weeks.